Hi everyone, it's meteorologist Joe Chaffee. It's Thursday. Uh, we're going to get right to it. Thank you for uh, being here on my YouTube page. If you're new, welcome. I hope you enjoy the video. And if you do, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Uh, it's absolutely free. You get notified when new videos come up and Google likes me a lot. And to all of you who return on a daily basis, thank you so much. I know there's some comments from yesterday. I haven't had a chance to get to them. I will get to them later today. Now, I hope one of the things that you've garnished from all the videos that we I've done as we move through the uh, winter season is how fluid everything is and how things change or, and, and, and they sometimes change pretty radically and how difficult the forecast process is, especially when you start to get beyond the first couple of days uh, because of the fact that, you know, you're forecasting change which is hard enough, and that uh, element of change is constantly changing. So, you, you know, you, you, you cannot, at some point, you just can't stay, uh, stay, stay ahead of the curve. Well, you know, there's a few things happening. Uh, I uh, mentioned yesterday, and I've said it a few times with regards to what's upcoming for early next week, that given the fact that so far this winter, we haven't seen any intense storms really um, meteorologically intense, um, with regards to depth of pressure and so on. And in lieu of the fact that uh, the European model in particular uh, is has forecasted an, a, a number of times for intense lows to form that never really wound up happening, that I was skeptical. And actually, I still am. Uh, I, I'm trying to figure out where these models are in terms of which one is ahead of the curve, because it, it almost seems to me like the GFS is at times ahead of the European on, on, on the curve and at other times behind it. So I'm not sure where we are at this stage, and you'll understand what I mean when I show you. But uh, here we have, you know, Sunday is not an issue. I mean, a few snow showers in some places, it whitens the ground on Super Bowl Sunday. Otherwise, there's, you know, nothing of consequence. But what is important is that this particular low on this particular run of the GFS is a little further to the slightly further to the north and a little less steep. Uh, the other thing that's important is that what's coming into the west, which is ultimately going to be the, the storm system that affects the east, is coming in faster. Uh, you, you can see in the west, uh, this is for just to show you go just backtrack from later Sunday afternoon into Sunday night and Monday. You know, this is going to be a significant snow and rain producer in. Uh, so in parts of California, on up uh, the Pacific Northwest coast, and then inland into the northern Rockies. Now, this system very quickly migrates. Now, on the new GFS run, which is a little bit different, uh, migrates the low to northeastern Kansas and produces snows across the Dakotas into Minnesota. You can see where this this kind of bu this bulge here, right there. There's a warm front that's setting up. One of the things that's happened on this particular run is, well, because everything is so faster, so much faster, and because this lead low from Sunday is not nearly as deep, the cold air and this high don't have a, have time to really build in. Um, it looks like, if this is correct, that snow could be arriving here uh, as early as Monday evening uh, as this warm front sets up. Now, uh, the resulting rain snow line, instead of being somewhere down, you know, down here in maybe even into northern Virginia, which was shown on earlier runs, is a is further north because there's, there was no time for that cold air to build in. Um, I'm not sold on this yet. Um, I'm I'm really, you know, approaching this with a lot of skepticism for a number of reasons, and in particular because it just makes the, the forecast is, is going to be tough to make here. Um, the, Europe, the GFS on this run swings out a deepening low to Chicago and then winds up with a fairly intense low in the central Great Lakes. Now, if this is correct, uh, and we are looking at uh, Tuesday night, actually 1 a.m. Wednesday morning, you know, we're talking big snows in this region here. So in the western part of the Great Lakes, we're talking snow to rain uh, throughout much of interior New England. And with this trailing cold front uh, and uh, the warm front is already to our north, you know, we're getting a very warm tropical flow here. So when that front approaches the coast, uh, we will we'll probably wind up with showers with rain and some thunderstorms. I wouldn't be at all surprised to see that. And then 
that low lifts out to the northeast. Now, let's look at what's going on in the upper air because this is really you know, critical. When I looked at the upper air yesterday, I didn't, you know, it kind of didn't match to me. It was just something that was was off. It just didn't make a lot of sense uh, in terms of the depth, in terms of the structure. And you know, today, at least from the standpoint of today's run of the GFS, you do have a, a little bit more of an of a of a stronger upper air view because the model cuts off this feature at the upper levels of the atmosphere. So when usually when you see that, that's usually a signature of a strong system. Uh, it wasn't really doing that yesterday. It doesn't necessarily mean, by the way, that this is correct. Um, th this is certainly a solution. I, again, I'm not 100% convinced that this is going to be the case, but I can't discount it anymore because, you know, we're getting a little bit closer to the event. So I'm going to have to see what, obviously see what other models do with all this. And then eventually it goes out. Now, what's left behind is... A bit interesting because you do have another system that's coming down on the back side as this one pulls out and the question is going to be for that second system and the uh, Canadian model showed this last night in a, in a fairly aggressive way is a question of room you'll notice that here's the there's a viable uh, shortwave trough there in the southern part of the jet there's, a, there's one coming down in the north, and the question is, is there going to be enough room, or is, or is this going to wind up getting together and phasing when it's already to the east? And you, uh, at least from the GFS's solution, uh, the answer to that question is it, it winds up getting suppressed. Um, the trough is like this. It's not swinging around. It's getting pushed to the east. The ridge is uh, inland in the Rockies instead of being closer to the West Coast. So this would imply that there would not be enough room. I would probably lean from a forecast standpoint, I would lean in that direction um, until, you know, proven otherwise. Uh, the models do tend to, you know, sometimes the GFS likes to oversuppress things. But, you know, given what I'm seeing, it kind of makes sense. And, and with this follow-up low, you, you can watch that as it drops down into Texas. You, you, you see snow in southern Missouri, produced in northern Arkansas, northern Tennessee, most of Tennessee, in fact. And then the low moves across the Gulf states, off the southeast coast, and then kind of runs out east-northeast. Now, I will just tell you that it wouldn't take much um, imagination uh, to have this, if this is real, to have it wind up being further left. So, you know, one thing that, that is clear to me is that given the upper air dynamics that we're dealing with, it looks like we are entering a, a stormier period for the long term. Now, whether that's going to come with cold air, you know, these cold air masses that we've been getting in have been transient. They only last for a couple of days and then they pull out. Uh, we haven't seen anything resembling a, a long term period of cold. Uh, it, it, in fact, you can't even string together more than three or four days of below normal temperatures before the thermometers shoot above normal and I might even be pushing it on the three to four. In the meantime we have another weather system coming into the west uh, along about uh, day eight and we will see how that plays out. We, this is the new GFS we're only out to day nine and at this point the transient air mass that comes in in the wake of the storm from uh, early next week uh, is getting ready to pull out uh, to the northeast, although it's still cold into Saturday. So it would say that it would probably be cold here again Thursday through Saturday. And after that, uh, we'll have to see how it goes. I'm going to uh, have to wait till the rest of the model run is in. I just want to show you the Canadian model from last night because that one um, was, was more aggressive with the second wave. I think mainly because it came out with it faster. If we back it up, you know, uh, here we go into uh, Sunday night, Sunday system, which is nothing. Now, here's the one for Tuesday, which is faster and further north. In fact, the, the Canadian has us missing all the warm frontal precipitation completely, uh, at least from New York City on southward. It's all up in New England. And then you just basically get what looks like a weak cold front coming through with just a few showers. It, it, it wanted to put all its energy in this. Here's that second wave that it drops in. And it was far more aggressive with that. It brings up a second wave on Wednesday, 
and makes that into a deepening storm going through upstate New York for Wednesday night into Thursday. And it was from that that we wound up with uh, heavy rains. Uh, and you can see that the snow behind it uh, covers parts of Ohio, Indiana, uh, northwestern Pennsylvania, and um, western New York. I look at the, you know, the, the Canadian is can get very squirrely sometimes. And, and, and I pointed out that, you know, broken clocks are right twice a day. And every once in a while, it does hit a home run. This, to me, does not look like a viable idea. I think maybe the, of, of the two bottles, the GFS, I think, has um, the better idea in all this. And let's look at the European. I have a little extra time today, so we can take our time doing this. This is the European from last night, which um, is not that different, really, from the GFS, except that it, it just, instead of last night, it, it took the low, has the primary low in north, northeastern Indiana, and there's a warm front here to the south. So it kind of has more of the GFS's idea that there might would be some snow and ice ahead of it, and then... Uh, change over to rain. Uh, it, it the low on this model was was fairly deep, but it was certainly not as deep and certainly not as wrapped up as that um, mega storm that it showed yesterday in the uh, a few runs ago in near Detroit. And then eventually it deepened it into a 974 low uh, up in northern Vermont. So you know if we're going to wind up with a deep system, this is as this is this and the GFS have realistic depi depictions and how it could come out, even though the timing may be different. Again, when I look at the upper air on the European, you know, it, it, there's a there's a fairly sharp trough here. I guess it would be supportive of a, you know, it's fairly it, it could be supportive of a deep low up north of Vermont. Um, you know, a lot of cold air coming in behind it, ridge that's out in the west. Um, is it the right solution? I don't know. Uh, I, I'm be perfectly honest. There are times when, you know, I believe meteorologists uh, and weather forecasters, you know, can, should acknowledge when they don't know something. Um, it, it 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 expresses the fact that that it explains the fact that how f the, the, the we have a f we're dealing with a fluid science here, and you know, over time we can look at the general trends, but sometimes we just don't know. And you have to just sort of wait for consensus to develop in order to figure out uh, where these things are ultimately going. Now, I want to just uh, also spend a little time, because I haven't done it in a, in a while, and I know I have my friends up in the Canadian Maritime Provinces um, that watch. So I want to give you the North Atlantic view, which I have to find. Um, Western, Northern Pacific. Where is that northern Atlantic view? Here we go. So we'll give you the northern Atlantic view, and hopefully we can look at this in terms of precipitation, and we'll go to the GFS. So I know you guys have said to me several times that you really like the fact that, that I cover this. Now, uh, we're only going to see precip, a whole precip with this, so I want you to at least get an idea of what it means for you. First off, that first storm for Sunday actually intensifies south of Newfoundland, on um, on Monday on Monday and by the way there is a very very intense storm this one here out in the Atlantic that's moving up to between Greenland and it looks like it might be near Iceland so between uh, it's just hard for me to see I need new glasses so it's half here's here's Western Europe here's Greenland and it's kind of in between but that's a really intense animal and the one behind it also becomes very strong and actually lifts up uh, and, and goes uh, toward the Greenland coast. But here's the here's the one uh, for Monday, Tuesday, uh, for Monday night, Tuesday night from the GFS, and that winds up going up into eastern Canada and brings you know, loads of precipitation up to Nova Scotia and eventually up into Newfoundland and and beyond. And there's that Gulf system uh, that's that's coming out uh, for the latter part of next week that goes way out to the east. And here we are now at day 10. Uh, we have another cold front approaching uh, from the, along the Canadian border, some colder air that's building up into Canada. How much of that cold air gets down here remains to be seen. How about the long range? How about the long range? Okay, so we'll go to the upper air. 
and here we go so we have this out now to day 11 so it'll be interesting before I even show you that I just want to show you by the way the longer term indices um, regards to the Pacific North America pattern the NAO the North Atlantic oscillation and the EPO the East Pacific oscillation this is new today I'm, I'm a, was interested this was interesting a based this is based off last night's weather model runs the uh, Pacific North America index goes off the wall positive for the first time in a long 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 time uh, as we go into the middle of the month and beyond if it's right and these forecasts change every day but if it's right it uh, a, a, a strongly positive PNA is usually a signature of a stormy pattern we also have uh, two other changes that have occurred on this run in that the NAO which was shown to be strongly positive for the neck through the middle of the month is now forecast to start to go negative uh, after around February 8th or 9th so we have uh, a negative NAO and this is a signature of blocking in the Atlantic this probably means that it, it will be uh, colder in the east than it otherwise would be the EPO is strongly positive which usually can sig signals warmer conditions in the east but it's also trending down to neutral toward the middle of the month so I'm going to be very if these if, if this view is correct and holds um, it would be a signature of a, a wintry pattern toward the middle and latter part of the month whether it is or not it depends of course of where the troughs and ridges line up which we can't tell you now anyway but you know I'm as guilty as all everybody else you know we're always looking so I, I'd like to I like to look and I like to see um, but you know I come to no conclusions based on this in terms of specifics uh, but if we look at the upper air going out to day 10 you know there is interestingly enough uh, you know we do have the the attempted setup of a colder flow out of Canada with a vortex that's trying to form up in Hudson's Bay you've got blocking that's beginning to develop uh, pushing in from <clears throat> from uh, northern Europe uh, moving across the Arctic Ocean into Greenland now where this plays out beyond day 10 is anyone's guess uh, the ridge in the west is in position so there's your strong positive Pacific North America pattern the PNA um, with that strong ridge out in the west and you have uh, a low a, a low in the Aleutians uh, with uh, a, a deep trough uh, that's shown to be out in the Pacific so you know everything seems to be you know, on this run wants to certainly have a colder look uh, going longer term you tune in tomorrow when we have a whole different picture that's all I can say at this point oh uh, you know what one more treat for the folks in the Canadian Maritimes and a shout out to my friends up in Michigan too in Grand Rapids um, let me just let's go to uh, try to get Eastern Canada here Southeast Canada so at least you can see in terms of snow what this might mean for you guys so let's let's move back um, so here's your system for uh, Monday which produces uh, snow across the Canadian Maritimes here's the one for Tuesday into Wednesday and, and you, it changes over to rain all the way up into Newfoundland because the low tracks to the west and then you go to snow showers after that and the one that comes off the southeast coast late next week if that's real skims part easternmost Newfoundland and moves out to the east you know I'm wondering whether you know there'll be some wind with this system the first system and there will also be some wind with the second one particularly once the low goes by to your north because it is fairly intense uh, so just 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 to bear that in mind uh, going forward and in terms of snowfall amounts and I'll show everybody's snowfall amounts too um, here is what you can expect you know so this you see for snow lovers they look at this and it's like you know seriously do I have to do you know you can just kind of sit back and, and and just watch it fall and pile up I guess you guys are used to this sort of thing uh, but the GFS through nine days produces you know 20 to 30 inches over a large area and even it prints out a 40 inch amount uh, you can see up in New Brunswick and uh, even into northern Maine producing 30 there's a 58 that it, it pops up over here I mean I can't even fathom that at six feet of snow there must be some elevated area up uh, here in um, in New Brunswick province and you know some some heavy snows into Maine northern Vermont New Hampshire if you're a skier 
you got to be loving this as accumulated. Again, this is the snowfall spread out over 10 days. So, you know, you basically, if you want to average it out, you're talking about two to three inches of snow a day for the next 10 days. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I'm trying to understand that. And, and as far as um, the Northeast is concerned, we'll look at that. This, again, is the GFS's view. Um, I want to just kind of X out. It's not my forecast. I, I you know, I, I'm showing these, you know, I, I, I know some people will say, why are you showing these snowfall maps, et cetera, et cetera. I, I show them because, look, they're in the pub public domain. So uh, I don't see any problem in showing these things um, because anybody that, anybody that wants to see them can see them. Um, but I've just tried to put a little context into, that, into the variability of all this. Uh, this is from the first system on Monday. You know, we've got a coating to some, you know, couple of inch amounts as you go up to the north. The second one uh, produces, uh, you know, a coating to an inch down to about 195 in New Jersey and basically along and north of Route 78 and southeastern New York into Connecticut. It produces you know, a couple, two or three inches with the, ahead of the warm front. I have to tell you, last night's run produced uh, much of the area uh, in northern New Jersey, north and east, was a lot, and into Connecticut produced six inch plus amounts because of how much it had much, a much colder look to it and had the warm front pinned a little bit further to the south initially. So there was more time for it to snow. And this is one of those situations where an extra couple of hours is going to mean it could mean an extra two or three inches for somebody. And then you can watch it grow. And here's that gulf system. Uh, for later next week that it produces some hefty snows in the Carolinas. Again, is it real? Who knows? You know, uh, I, I, I guess for the snow lovers, you guys can sort of drool at this. Uh, we'll, in all practicality, the snowfall forecast is not something that you really can can make with any kind, any degree of accuracy until you're actually maybe inside 48 hours. I think you can give it a good guess at 72 hours. Um, a, 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 a really good uh, guess at 40 at 36 hours and then a solid forecast and even in that could be a little shaky sometimes inside 24 okay went 22 minutes I think that's good <laughs> I hope some of you are still left have a great rest of your day uh, make sure you check the post later this afternoon and this evening on meteorologistjoechoffee.com as we uh, take a look at what the European model does and uh, the, the app, download my forecast for just 99 cents a month for New York, New Jersey, Long Island, Connecticut, Hudson Valley, and Eastern Pennsylvania. If you live in those zones, uh, the forecasts are zone specific, so you will get a forecast that's tailored for you by me personally. I write them, okay? A uh, computer doesn't do it. I do it. And it's just a buck a month, so less than the price of a cup of coffee. And it helps me greatly to keep producing all this stuff and paying for it, et cetera, et cetera. And, uh, of course, again, if you are really still here, I'm guessing you really like this and you drank a lot of coffee so that you didn't snooze off along the way, hit the subscribe button for my YouTube videos. That is absolutely free and always will be. And uh, I really would appreciate it. Please uh, do participate in the conversation that breaks out on a daily basis and, um, you know, have fun. Because that's at the bottom, the end of the day, that's really what, 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 what this is about. You know, this is something I have a passion for. And, you know, I'm very fortunate in my life that I was able to work um, and have a career in something that I truly, truly enjoyed. And work for me was never really work, um, which is um, a nice thing. Maybe that's why it, it kind of went so fast. Um, I was talking with a fellow meteorologist, a friend of mine, Joe Rayo, last night about this. And, um, you know, we were both kind of going along the same sentiment that, you know, it's never been really work for us. And, and that's, and that's uh, most fortunate. So uh, we're very blessed. Anyway, sorry, getting too philosophical now. Uh, have a great day and we'll talk to you later.